Hi guys and welcome to this week's competitive guide. So in this series we are looking at competitive Pokemon and looking at them, analysing them and giving you guys some sample sets, giving you an idea of how to run them in the new format which is the VGC 2018 format. Obviously it is starting, commencing on the 1st of January 2018 so we've got a few weeks yet till it actually kicks in but it's a good time to go over some um, competitive Pokemon, look at them, look at why they're so good and, and give you guys some ideas of how and why people are using them. So, um, the last few weeks we've we covered Landra's Theory and Form. We covered two of the new Ultra Beasts in the Ganadel and Stack Attacker, and it would seem fitting to finish the trio off with Blacephalon today, but I'm going to leave Blacephalon alone just for a little while. We will come to it at some point because one Pokemon I do feel like I really want to um, look at and make sure I do a competitive guide on is Aegislash because. Um, Preliminarily playing through the new format and you know playing a few games and things you do notice trends in in teams and Aegislash at the moment seems to be Everywhere like everyone is using it everyone. It's a go-to Pokemon for a lot of players and um, there's a lot of variants out there as well and for good reason because it's a very good Pokemon so as you can see on your screen right now We've got a brief overview of Aegislash, so it is a steel ghost type Pokemon, um, a very unique typing, I think the only typing like it in the whole Pokemon world at the moment, anyway, um, so it's got um, some nice stats as you can see, and the, the one big thing that we'll do, we'll look at here is, it's got two forms, so it's got an ability called Stance Change, and this ability, when you're attacking, it changes form from its a shield form into um, an attack form which is called a stance form and its stats all whip around so its defense is and its attack stats change around pretty much or very similar so if we just look down here it's got um, in its stance form so this is attack form it has 60 HP 150 attack 50 defense 150 special attack 50 special defense and 60 speed so Everything across the board isn't too great, except those two attack stats, which are just phenomenal. 150 in both of those is ridiculous. Now, I'm quickly just going to flip over because I think I can go into the shield form. And we can, yeah, if I can just wangle my cursor around here. So, we've got the shield form. And as you can see here, when it goes into shield form, so it goes into shield form when it uses something like King's Shield, reverts out of that attack form goes straight into it at the start of the turn before it gets attacked and then its attack and its defenses are switched around. Now this is a really unique ability as well for this Pokemon and unique typing, unique ability and unique you know signature move as well in King Shield. Um, so when it does its stats change to 60 HP, 60 uh, no 50 attack sorry, 150 defense 50 special attack, 150 special defense, and then 60 speed. So HP and, and speed stay the same, and the defenses and the attacks, that's just switch around. So in defensive form, it's a very good Pokemon, especially when you look at its resists and its weaknesses. So it's only really got four weaknesses, um, which are ground, ghost, fire, and dark, all two times weak. So it's not got any massive, huge weaknesses, but it has a bunch, an absolute ton of resists. And this is what makes it very good in this format because it gives you a cushion almost to switch in against a lot of big attacks, soak them up and regain a good board position or regain some momentum and start putting pressure on from your side of the board. It's a very forgiving Pokemon to use in the format. And uh, for good reason, you know, it was uh, every year it's been available, I think, barring 2016 which was just um, because of the, the, the restricted legendaries like Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre and things like that. It didn't make as much of a splash as it has in every other year that it's been available. So just to go over those resistances, it takes half damage from flying, rock, steel, grass, psychic, um, ice, dragon and fairy, a quarter damage from bug and it's immune to normal fighting and poison which is insane when you think about it like if you think about other pokemon and what their resists and what their immunities are i don't think they'll stack up anywhere near as good as what Aegislashes slashes are and especially with those defenses the 60 hp 150 defense stats in in stance and its uh, shield form make it a very very formidable pokemon and then very threatening because it's a very slow pokemon as well so the likelihood is you'll attack it in its defense form its defenses will be raised It'll change after that, after you've attacked it, it'll survive the hit, and then it'll attack you with those 150 
base attacks that it can throw out, you know, so it's a very strong Pokemon overall. Uh, as I mentioned, signature move, King Shield. Um, so that is basically, at the start of the turn, it's like Protect almost, but it does, so it'll <clears throat> go from attack mode, King Shield, go back into the Shield mode here, it's defense as a bolster, and um, then it'll be protected from any attacks. And if there's an attack into it, um, like a physical attack or anything that makes contact into that shield it will drop the um, opposing attacking Pokemon's um, attack stat by two stages which is like the, the side effect to it again making it even more formidable to take down so if that's played right you catch your opponent correctly with that King Shield it's very strong and um, playing against an Eggy Slash as well it throws up a lot of mind games <clears throat> because if it's in if it's in its attack mode and it's in its stance mod um, <clears throat> do, you ta do you attack into it the next turn because it very likely goes into its 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 defense form and goes for a king shield and then you get caught with a minus two attack drop and that's where the mind comes games come into it you know uh, so a lot of times if you've got a special type attack going into it it's a lot more preferable it's a lot more consistent it's a lot less risky etc but we'll go through everything as we go through this guide so i hope you enjoy this guys and um <clears throat> what else is there to cover before we quickly move on to our first set ah notable moves so um <clears throat> i do apologize I feel like I've got, I've, I've had a little bit of a, a, a throat, a bad throat in the past <clears throat> weekend, if you can't tell. But it should be alright to get this done today. Um, yeah, so we'll just go over some attacks that it, it can learn. And um, so our notable attacks, its special side, are going to be Shadow Ball, Flash Cannon. And I would probably put Hidden Part Ice in there. Outside of that, you, you're going to be struggling to find anything. But I mean, they're not too bad because you've got two attacks that are getting the same type of attack bonus in Shadow Ball and the Flash Cannon. Hidden Part Ice is quite handy as well because... <clears throat> Sorry about this, guys. You can you can hit things that are, like, super effective against it. So, you know, things that are going to be threatening you, like a Landorus, you'll be able to take an Earthquake. Um, Salamence as well. It's not really threatening you too much with its Aerial eight, Double Edge or Hyper Voice. And you can return potentially a KO with that hidden part ice. So it's very handy for Pokemon like that. Um, uh, so that's a special side that I've kind of highlighted, I guess. It does have a lot more physical options though as well. So it gets Shadow Claw, Sacred Sword, which is a really good one. Um, Iron Head, Shadow Sneak, Head Smash, Night Slash, Jarrowball and Rock Slide were what I highlighted. And then the support options it gets are King Shield, obviously. It's a signature protect move that you kind of really want and need to, to activate that stance change ability. You've got sword stance as well, wide guard, which is extremely good in this format. Even though the new mechanics will be getting patched, it's still a very viable and good support of move. Um, Autotomize, um, which boosts your speed by two stages. Hope I'm saying that right as well. Uh, Destiny Bond and Substitute. And just a notable mention that, like every other Pokemon, it gets toxic which could be used to some use, I guess. It depends how the format shapes out, how bulky it gets, how how useful that will be. I don't know, but it did. Uh, it was something that I thought warranted a little mention. So, with that, that's a quick overview of Aegislash. Um, and just to note as well, why it's popular at the minute, because you've got a lot of Pokemon like Cresselia for one, you've got Mega Kangaskhan, Mega Salamence, and they're just to name, off the top of my head, a few that are like super popular at the moment that Aegislash can deal with super easily. Um, Stack Attacker can't really do too much to it. Um, the list goes on and on and on. It's such a good Pokemon. And like I say, it's got those defenses in that defense mode where it can come in with all those resists and immunities just to soak up and take a bit of pressure off you, off your side of the field, and maybe give you that bit of room to kind of maneuver in and start building a bit of momentum back into the battle if things aren't going too well for you in a certain situation. So, <clears throat> let's move on to our first example. So, let's go over the showdown. And we've got the first sample set that I want to give you guys is the Ghostium Z set. So, taking advantage of that Shadow Ball, of those big, big um, special attack stats when you go into that attack form. Um, and this is the, so we've got Shadow Ball, 
Flash Cannon, Wide Guard and King Shield. I'd say this is probably quite a standard Ghost Z set at the moment. I don't know what the standard EV spread is, but I've went with something that makes a little bit of sense to myself. And as always, guys, with all of these sample sets that I'll be putting in um, this, this episode, I will be linking in a pay spin if you want to go and just grab them, try them out on maybe Showdown or something like that before you put them in game, or if you want to tinker with them as well. But remember that these are just sample sets to get you started. They can be tweaked, they can be tinkered with, and like I always say, and I will continue to always say, so sorry if this does get a little bit boring, but one thing I will always say is, these are sample sets, they are not designed around a team, and it's always, I would say, from my experience, if you're building a team, EV the Pokemon to fit with the team, because it will change from team to team, from Pokemon that you have combined with other Pokemon, and you've always got to cater for the team rather than just stick it, slap a Pokemon in there and play with it. Sometimes it works and I'm not going to deny that. Sometimes it just works and a Pokemon can do a job and it's perfect in a team without touching it at all. But sometimes it does take a little tinkering with here and there just to make sure that it's doing the exact job that you want it to within that team and its role is being fulfilled to its maximum. <clears throat> so we went over the move set. We've got an EV spread of, we've got a modest nature, 108. Um, HP, EVs, 4 defense EVs, uh, 244 special attack EVs, 60 special defense EVs and 60 speed EVs. So there you can see, this is pretty much just what I've thrown together. And let's have a look, if I can throw up a damage calculator here, um, I'll pull some, um, I will pull some <clears throat> calculations together for you guys just to show you what this EV spread does. So let me have a look. <clears throat> Here we go. So first off, we have um, against and look, yeah. So this is why um, you might be thinking, why have you got so much speed in there? And um, one of the reasons that I think I've got so much speed in this, and it makes a lot more sense. And this can change, and it's all dependent on what players are standard like the standard speed stat is on an Aegis Slash or people going a little bit faster or people going very slow etc etc and to determine this it just takes practice you've got to practice in the in out there on the battle spot on showdown and just test these things if it's too slow then you can speed it up maybe adjust some things here and there take some uh, EVs out of HP take some out of special defense attack even if you need to um, but my point is, one of the biggest threats I feel to Aegislash is opposing Ghost Z Aegislash. Because in that defense mode, if the opposing Aegislash is faster than your Aegislash, and they go for that never-ending nightmare before you do, there's not really much you can do to survive that. Like, you can go careful, sassy, 252 special defense, 252 HP, and it's still going to pick up the, the knockout when you're in defense mode. So it's a clean one shot on opposing Aegis Slashes unless they've got maybe a resist berry or seed or we can come to that stuff sort of later. So I think it's quite important making sure that you do outspeed opposing Aegis Slashes. And I feel like with 92 speed investment, modest nature, it seems like enough. <clears throat> and with that as well, you speed creep base 70 Pokemon with a neutral nature for um, speed EVs, stuff like Politoed that you might have Trainers might have an additional four um, EVs left after getting all the defensive and, and offensive calcs in there and just think, right, well, this four can go on speed, so it'll hit a speed of like 91. Um, <clears throat> so for this instance, we're just creeping that by one. It, you know, that's the thing. It might not make much difference, but in that one situation, it might do as well. Um, so this is a big calc with the 244 uh, plus special attack. Aegislash Blade form, Never Again Nightmare, gets the, the KO on a shield form, Aegislash 252 HP. And like I say, if we go 252, and if we go careful as well, just to boost it even more, you're still getting it. This is what I mean. This is why it's so powerful. This is like ridiculous. Like, this is ridiculous. It's such a such a defensive Pokemon that's 167 HP, 220 special defense, and you're still getting it with the Z move guaranteed so that's a big one 
um, and that was the first one that I wanted to highlight here so what else do you get let's have a look why else do people use this and why is it so good because it's good at removing big threats from the field so with that modest nature plus nature 244 special attack EVs in there you are guaranteed to get the one hit KO on a 220 standard run-of-the-mill Cresselia um, it is calm nature with 92 um, special defense EVs in there 100% of the time shot a ball never-ending nightmare gonna pick up the KO on Cresselia which is gonna stop a set of trick room which is gonna stop it ally switching which is gonna stop it icy wind in just being a bit of a pain and supporting the rest of its teammates if you can remove that from the field then that's that's pretty huge uh, what else have we got here um, <clears throat> oh this is quite a nice car this is quite a nice car and it makes makes sense for the um, special defense EVs that we've got in there as well I've went for 149 with the, the HP because I needed a bit of HP in there to get the calc um, and the special defense EVs but the the, um, the HP number just reduces the damage from um, weather so like hail and leech seeds and things like that that could be a problem so you're just reducing that damage slightly um, okay so we've got overheat Rotom H let's go into our shield form so in shield form against your standard Rotom heat 108 special attack investment modest nature overheat got a 6.3 percent chance to kill which is pretty good like likelihood is if you haven't taken any chip you have full of hp you're gonna survive that attack like 100 percent whereas if you go into blade form and the shadow ball is a pretty much 93 percent chance to kill that rotom that same 252 hp for special defense rotten heat in return so one-on-one -on -one in that situation i thought that was quite a nice calc um it's it, it, it i can win out against such a big threat um what else have we got in defensive mode so let's go back into our shield form um i think i just highlighted this so um <clears throat> yeah we take a um a sucker punch from a life orb adam and bishop uh, which will allow us to get maybe an attack off onto something next to it um we're never going to take the um no we will take the knockoff because the knockoff doesn't activate with the z move so we take a knockoff as well which is pretty nice um and there's always options there to go with maybe sacred sword over the flash cannon if you wanted um because <clears throat> that would pick up the kill um but that's kind of that set in a nutshell um, I've kind of went over what what the the reasons were for for most of the EVs there. I feel like Rotom Heat is one of those Pokemon that as we go through the season, people are probably it's being a bit slept on at the moment, and I feel like it probably will creep more and more into the format, along with other Rotoms. And if Rotom Heat is becoming a thing to deal with Aegislash especially, then um, that's just a nice card to have, isn't it? Especially with the, the Ghostium. And like I say, it all depends though. The speed stat all depends on what players are, are kind of really, the, the standard speed stat that players are running opposing Aegis Slashes. And like I say, the only way to really find that out is by going out there and playing and seeing what your speed stat is like against all that Aegis Slashes. If you go out with this set and you think, wow, they're never getting out of bed by any Aegis Slash, then that's fine, isn't it? But if you constantly get outsped and you're getting caught out then maybe you need to look at that and maybe you need to try and work out what the speeds are to kind of increase that match that or kind of just put something in your team to kind of help cover that a little bit so that is that i mean you take in defense mode as well just to kind of give you an idea of what you can take attack wise he try and modest um in shield form you're always going to take uh heat wave earth power <clears throat> and in blade mode you're you're pretty much guaranteed the kill back 68 percent on a 4 hp heatran it's not the best but it's definitely not the worst either uh, so if you've got a little bit of chip on that heatran i um, mean it's not as bulky as built then then you know you can take that uh charizard y let's see i'm sure we take like a heat wave in the sun um no we don't not with this set okay so if you can change the the weather though if you've got weather support that's a big thing obviously weather support is huge you'll be able to take that heat wave um and the flamethrower and in blade mode when you change you'll be picking up the ko pretty much on most charizard as well so that's just a nice example there um so 
let us go back over to showdown because we'll look at the next sample set so that was the the ghost gym set just a standard one to kind of start us off with next i decided to have a look at a set that was ran wow 2014 2015 very big and um a very common set run on Aegis slash i've tweaked evs here and there to kind of make it a bit more pliable within this format than what it was back then but um, doing a similar role to what it did back then. And this is a, a substitute bulky defensive left of as Aegislash. So it comes in, disrupts, get a substitute up. Um, you can substitute between substituting King Shielding to stall opponents out to you know, manipulate a board position to, to your choosing to what suits you a little bit better. And with this combination, if you can get the substitute off, makes Aegislash really difficult to deal with it also gives you that extra coverage um, against priority attacks that might be a bit threatening like sucker punches and things like that and just to allow you to get some attacks off in between just being threatened you know in that blade form you can attack twice because you've probably got the the substitute up you can attack and then hopefully if your sub's still there then you can attack again obviously uh, because your sub's still up but it just gives you that little bit of extra protection and i do like it because it's a very slow pokemon it's it's one of those pokemon that you can bring into the field and slow your opponent's strategy down because it takes a lot of resources to get rid of this Aegislash, slash and they're going to be guessing when you're king shielding and things like that so it just takes a lot of the momentum away from your opponent and slows the game down to a more um convenient place to where you want to be more comfortable place in time where you want to be and um, so Aegislash very good at doing that and this set in particular and um, so we have same move set again shadow ball flash cannon substitute king shield so the substitute is the the big star of the show we've got the leftovers as well there that allows you to just heal back a bit of damage every turn um, and Aegislash is a good pokemon to to have the leftovers on really um and then we will move over to and like i say with with the move sets and things like you can interchange like you could put um sacred sword or a flash cannon if you wanted you could put shadow sneak on there if you wanted hidden part ice on there if you wanted you've got many many options that you can use on there so let's just go over to uh i'm just going to fly through this one because it's not there's not so much to say on it but we'll go over to the damage calculator again here is the um this leftovers uh subset so it's got two or four hp evs um, and that gives you a 161 number, so that means you get 4 substitutes plus that 1 extra HP. Um, so just to kind of make it the most out of your HP number there. Uh, 36 defense, 20 special defense, um, and again we went for that 92 speed stat. Because again it's a bit like the previous set where I've said it does depend on opposing Aegis Slashes and what they're running. But if, if you know they're, they've got the Gostium Z. Uh, and you can sub on that before they use the Z move. That's huge because you waste their Z move pretty much. And then they'll break your sub, but you'll be in a position where you're still in your defense mode. They're in their attack mode, and that's the opening you need because they they're pressured at that point. They've wasted their Z move, and they're in a point a position where you can attack them this next turn and pick up a clean kill. And they've not got an answer, a quick answer to get rid of your Aegislash slash anymore. Um, so that's a nice option and that's why I opted for a bit more speed. Like I say though, depending on how what players and how players are running their opposing Aegis Slashes and other Pokemon, it will depend on um, that speed stat and that can be tinkered with again. But this is just, like I say, a sample set um, to give you guys an idea of how it's meant to operate. And I, I feel um, a faster sub is better because especially against opposing Aegis Slashes. And I keep mentioning Aegis Slash because I do feel like it is probably one of the more threatening um, opponents that your own Aegis Slash can face down against because of the, the just the ability and the attacks that are coming out. And it's all about the mind games. And if you can have any advantage over the opposing Aegis Slash, like say it is threatened or something, and say you bring your Aegis Slash in on the opposing Aegis Slash and it's in its, in its um, attack mode, now the, the next turn, it's likely that it's going to go for a King Shield to make sure it can survive at least one Shadow Ball. So it goes for that. That's the turn you go for a potential substitute. And then the next turn, what does it do? Because you can Shadow Ball it, it's going to Shadow Ball you, and then it's back to that same position again, where you're in a position to kill it before it can knock you out. So you're just going round and round and round in cycles. So that's that 
for instance, that's why it's very good. It also against things like Cresselia that aren't going to be hitting it very hard. Um, especially if you can get in when the Trick Room's up in the Trick Room. Partner Pokemon isn't going to threaten you very much. It gives you an ideal t time to set up that substitute. So when they're switching in their check for their for your Aegis Slash, you've got the sub up already on that turn. And you're ready to go and start really causing a lot of ruckus with your own Aegis Slash. Um, so it is very good. And like I say, it's just job is amazing because of its resistances, its immunities, its defenses. It can come in, it can slow the game down and just let you kind of breathe a little bit and kind of compose yourself into going forward. Um, so let's look at some calculations on this. Um, so I've mentioned the HP number, what that was for. Um, uh, threat supposing a ghost gym z Aegis slash yes that is something um and one little thing i'll mention it later but uh, i do have a partner that is quite nice for that specific threat as well so i've explained about the speed just to get the jump and get the the, um, the substitute off um okay so uh, parent of bond let's have a look this is the one so kangas con mega kang so let's have a look so Mega Kang, Sucker Punch, from an Adamant Mega Kang is doing, like it's got an 18.8% .8 chance to two hit KO with the leftovers, which is pretty nice. Um, and if you catch one of them, like if you catch something where it tries to burn, I think if it tries to burn a fake out into you or something now, I think the fake out has to work though, it still activates the King Shield, even though you're immune to it, being a ghost type, it still activates. But I don't think if you're using it after the first turn, then it will just fail, so it won't activate. Um, I'm not really sure on Law Kick or Double Edge, but that's something I can have a look at, I guess, and find out and, and mention it another time. But you're not like you're going to be able to just get the sub up for free pretty much if they're relying on, on Sucker Punch. Get the sub up and you can just chip away at them because they're not going to have too many. You get eight Sucker Punches. Um, and let's see what the Sucker Punch does. It KO in defense mode? Yeah, it does. But I mean, minus one, you're going to be able to take that in your in your blade form as well. So um, that's just one little calc, I guess, to start us off. Where else have I went with this? So yeah, we take a Life Orb Sucker Punch from a Bishop. Again, that's a big one. Problem is with this set, because we've got an item, the knockoff is going to chaos if the bishop holds that, and it probably will. But we take a, um, an adamant life orb, sucker punch, all day with with this set, so that's that's quite nice. Not enough room to, to get a sub up, but if they're going for sucker punch over anything else, then you're going to get the, the sub up if they go for that, that substitute um, that turn, if they go for the sucker punch that turn. Um, da -da -dun. Oh, this was the one I wanted to just mention. So if you if you're facing down against like Heatran potentially, um, we'll ignore the overheat because that's just a ridiculous move, and not many Heatrans run it. Just because of how popular Aegis Slash is, it might be something that you guys want to consider, possibly. Um, but if you're going for the standard Heatran set like Heat Wave or Earth Power, um, both doing not massive amount of damage, but enough damage over half most situations but it does give you room to take that attack in defense mode and then get the sub up so you can kind of go on from there get a little bit of health back and maybe get an attack off that you know he trans in range and all you need to do is get one more attack off with your Aegis slash it takes the attack through the sub and then you can get that attack off just for instance sake um and yeah there wasn't too much else i wanted to say in here but an interesting calc that you can have a look at is um what was it so it was um hmm i didn't go max yeah i went um so i went ludi and i think it was 188 special attack i'm not really sure if people are running uh, like max max attack ludicolo it doesn't make much sense because you lose a lot of bulk doing that and especially with the speed investment you need to kind of outspeed certain threats like land or Ethereum form etc but this is a nice calc so if it's anything below this number the hydro vortex in the rain Aegis slash is going to survive which is good and that just shows how defensive it is. It, that's, it's nothing more to do with this set because this set, basically, I've put the HP number in, um, I've given it a bit of defense, the speed stat was important, and then the, um, well, basically, it was the, the HP, the speed, 
special attack and then what was left over was just divvied out between the defenses so this set can be toyed with a little bit but it's a basic premise of how this Aegis Slash is meant to operate more than anything else if you get what I mean with that so um, that is that one so let's jump back over to showdown who's our next Aegis Slash now this is a little favorite Aegis Slash of mine really favorite so this is a weakness policy variant and um, I will just say before we get into the weakness policy variant um, depending on your team will depend how you want to um, EV it because you can go big on the special defensive side if you want not as much on the defensive side but I feel like if you look at Aegis Slash the two big um, physical type attacks that are going to come out of you are going to be um, probably Ground DMZ and Crunch from Tyranitar and um, probably a knockoff because you can't intimidate that from a bishop. Um, so they're the big attacks, um, and you can calc for those. And you can you can kind of outside of bishop, you can use intimidate to get around those. Now the biggest attacks on the special side of the spectrum are going to be um, you're going to have uh, black hole eclipse, and you're going to have the never ending nightmare from opposing Aegis slash. That you just can't calc against them. Like I showed you the calc. On Aegis Slash, you got even plus nature special defense, 252 HP, 252 special defense. You still can't take it in stance form, so I feel like that's a bit redundant. And you can pretty much do the same calc again for High Dragon, Modest, or Timid with the, the um, Black Hole Eclipse. So you can't do that. So that's why I feel a little bit like it's slightly redundant going all in on those stats when you're not really covering everything. Whereas with most things with this Aegis Slash here, we've got a relaxed nature as you can see, so we've got a, um, a, a plus defense nature. We've got a lot of defense in there. We've got uh, 188 HP EVs, which gives that nice round uh, 159 number, reducing chip damage from hail, uh, leech seed, etc. Um, we've got 212 and the plus nature in defense. We've got 92 special attack. We've got um, 12 in special defense nothing in speed we've got four evs left over but um you could probably throw them into attack to be honest because um we do have sacred swords so we'll just throw them in there just for the sample and i'll update the the pace spin as well um but let's have a look let's let's jump over so that's pretty much the set the set that we've got the move set is shadow ball hidden part eye sacred sword and king shield um, to take advantage of that weakness policy and just to give you guys an idea of what this thing can do let me just pull up the damage calculator window so I've already put the plus twos in there but you can see a sucker punch like this defense on this Aegis Slash okay so this is an adamant Kangaskhan it's not intimidated an adamant Kangaskhan sucker punch against the blade form Aegis Slash is 77 to 93 percent so it's not even KOing you in blade form in your weak form that's crazy unintimidated as well like and then you can have a look at the sacred sword damage that it does back once that weakness policy has activated you're KOing like one hit KOing easily a 4 HP Kangaskhan Mega Kangaskhan as well so that's pretty huge that's that's such a nice calc there as well um where else where else have i got so that's against that ah let's have a look at our good old friend landerous theory in form so standard landerous theory in form let's get out of our blade form because we don't want to be in blade form for a tectonic rage but we do want to get the minus one on it and this is an important thing you're gonna have to get a minus one this is just such a devastatingly big attack it's a single target ground type attack coming into you but with the defenses that you've got it turns that attack into it's got a 6.3 percent chance so as long as you can get an intimidate off onto the opposing landerus if it's going to launch that tectonic rage into you you've got full hp there's very 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 little chance that it's going to ko you and to boot when you attack back you've got the hidden part ice and i don't even think you need the plus two you don't even need the plus two but you'll get the plus two um so even if haze is a thing in between you getting tech raged and then um getting the weakness policy boost then landerus's partner hazes you you don't even need it to kill the landerus theory in form obviously plus two is very nice it 
just guarantees it even more. But this is why you don't need too much special uh, attack um, in there because you've got the, the boosts. Uh, what else? So that's a that's a really nice calc. Obviously, the um, when we're in blade form, it doesn't really work, but in stance form, we've got that tiny little chance, and I think we can get away with that. You could make it guaranteed if you want. Uh, you could take some. You know, EVs out of special defense, maybe some out of special attack, put them in to make sure that is a guarantee. But I don't feel like you need to go any further than that, to be honest, because it's such a small chance anyway. Um, what else have we got? So we've done that. Uh, let's have a look at old Bishop, our good old friend, the friendly Bishop. So this is, we're going to have to put an item on here. Let's just put. Um, Let's put an Adam. Oh no, we don't want an Adam and Orb, do we? Let's just put leftovers on there, just for just for the sake of the knockoff, because we need an, an item on there for knockoff to do its damage calc. So against our Aggie Slash, say Bishop has knockoff, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go for the knockoff into the Aegis Slash. Like, bring it, bring it on. We can't intimidate um, Bishop either because it's got the Defiant ability. We don't want to give it an attack boost. Um, so you think, right, yeah, we'll take it. And your opponent's like, I've got a life orb bishop with knockoff. It's got an item. It's going to KO. 100%. Uh-uh. No, no, no. So with this 188 HP, 221 uh, defense stat, you are able to take that knockoff. Lose your item. Your item will activate. Not that it matters, because even in your shield form with your really rubbish attacks that you're able to pick up the kill with, with Sacred Sword. Um... Oh, that was with plus two boost, but you know, you get the point, and um, you're going to be able to kill in return, and that's what it is like a revenge killer, ultimate revenge killer, which is pretty nice. So, that's a pretty big one there, and it's kind of nice knowing that, Kalk. Um, what else? So, we've got that. Oh, um, oh, there's, here's another nice one that I kind of was looking at Heatran. Big, big problem. Heatran isn't going to have Heat Wave Z move. It might do, but very unlikely. So we take the the heat wave. Hopefully, it hasn't got overheat. But we take the heat wave or the earth power that comes in. It might expect. We'll be scared of the earth power. Um, the wide guard, so it goes earth power. We take that quite comfortably. Switch into our blade form. Weakness policy activated. Sacred sword on a four HP heat trend is a, a guaranteed knockout, which is pretty big. Again, it's another big threat to Aegislash slash, and you're able to just deal with it quite comfortably. Um, what else have we got? So, uh, we've had the Bishop, we've got the Sucker Punch from the thingy, and I think that's pretty much all I basically covered. But you get the gist of how strong it is um, with that defensive stat um, and the weakness policy as well. Once you get the weakness policy boost, and you know you can always put something next to it with heal pulse potentially. Um, or you could even look at something like Clefairy with Friend Guard, with Follow Me support. You don't need as much defense investment then. And because of the friend guard, you're going to get that additional boost. And you might be able to just toy around with some calcs between the two to make sure you can balance out with taking maybe um, a Ghost DMZ from an Imposing Aegislash Slash with that defensive boost and some additional EVs. And then you take everything on the defensive spectrum as well because of the friend guard. And, and again, just a few um, defense EVs. And then go from there but that's just an option and it's just an idea to think about but this is just uh, like I keep saying these are just sample sets to try out and I'm just kind of going over them to make a little bit of sense to them for you guys if you want to try them out they're not um, hearsay they're not like solid this is what you've got to use this is how you've got to use it these are just ideas to get you started using Ega Slash and just give you a bit of an understanding of what it's capable of and I feel like this weakness policy set gives you a good idea of exactly what it is capable of um, and it's one of those Pokemon that you can really quite comfortably put a weakness policy on because of how good its defenses are and how good it is able to take even some of the strongest attacks against it so and to boot with that, it has huge um, special attack stats to kind of go with the weakness policy and make sure you're getting like the most out of that item as possible as well. So, what's next then? So, I think the next set that we're going to look at is... Ah, okay. So, this is a little bit of a niche set, but one I thought was probably worth mentioning as well. So, let's go back over to our uh, showdown. 
and here we've got it's an auto um Aegis Slash. So I've kind of coined the name Turbo Slash, but it's probably already been called that before. But I thought it was kind of cool. Um, and I've left the item slot open, and I've left the the second attacking slot open as well because I feel like you can for the item here you could you could have um, Life Orb. Uh, that could be viable. You could have again weakness policy again would be very viable here um, Or you could have the ghostium um, The ghostium Again very viable on this set all good options. I think um, To get around this and and for the the second attacking option I've said you could have uh, hidden part ice. It's definitely an option there sacred sword again giving you good coverage um, and what was the other one flash cannon as well was the other one that i kind of went for um as options that if it was me personally i think i'd probably go sacred sword or hidden part ice um with this this set and spread because um what this auto optimize does is it gives you um when you use it it gives you a plus two speed boost so it doubles your speed um, it's a bit like a tailwind, but it's never going to run out um, as long as there's no um, Here's users on the field or anything like that or raw users, etc. But um, we've got um, An EV spread 188 again just hitting that magic number just to reduce uh, hail chip damage like uh, Life orb if you've got it there um, Leech seed etc. We went for four defense 92 special attack um, for special defense and a huge, huge amount of speed, 220 speed and um, timid nature as well. So after um, a, a speed boost, you're going to be hitting a speed of, let me see, um, <clears throat> you're going to be hitting a speed of 236. And that allows you to outspeed Jolly Scarfed max speed Landorus Theory in form by one point. And that's why I'd probably go with the Hidden Part Ice here, because if you can guarantee you get one of these off and Scarf Landerus comes in, for instance, you can pick up the KR cleanly on it with that Hidden Part Ice, which is pretty good. Um, and if you've got the Life Orb there, you kind of probably don't need as much special attack investment, um, or you might want to go a bit more to guarantee a few a few turns and things like that. Um, <clears throat> let's think, what what do we survive? Because I haven't really done damage calcs for this as much as I have the others. I've just kind of outlined what we survived. So yeah, Life Orb Sucker Punch from um, Adam and Bishop again. Uh, Flamethrower, Heat Wave from Charizard Y. Not in the sun though, obviously. Um, Mega Gengar, Timid Shadow Ball does like 72 to 88 percent in your defensive mod. Um, and offensive calcs, so you know, against um, a Kangaskhan without the life orb as well you'll like with the life orb you'll be guaranteeing it actually let's 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 pull these calcs up I'm gonna just plug this in because it feels a bit redundant not doing this and just saying them to you it's not really making as much as much leeway with you as well so let's just do this it'll be better if I do it so let's go timid nature and then we can go like say Kangaskhan mega can so um, let me pull our screen up. So there we go. Yeah, um, this is just an example. Uh, sucker Punch, we're in blade form, so we don't want to be in blade form. We want to be in shield form. We take the Sucker Punch quite comfortably there. Switch into our blade form and our Sacred Sword. You see, without a life orb, it's doing decent damage. It's pretty much a two hit kill. Nearly always guaranteed. If you go life orb into this, though, you're like easily guaranteeing that it would be picking up the kill and doing that big chunk of extra damage there and um, again you could go weakness policy so if you go weakness policy it's a lot like the, the calcs that we had previously it will pick up the one hit kill with that plus two um, and yeah or you could go what was the other option I said on there uh, let's see I went um, hmm. Life or weakness policy, Ghostium. Yeah, we could go Ghostium in there. Um, I'm just going to do a quick calc against the Poison Aegis Slash. If you've got the plus two and you're outspeeding it, you're going to be pretty much outspeeding most of these Aegis Slash anyway. Life Orb Shadow Ball on a Poison Aegis Slash. It's not doing too bad, but if you take the Life Orb off, like we've said earlier, and we got Ghostium Z, you're going to be KOing um, 252 HP for special defense. Pause and Aegis Slash, so that's pretty nice. And with that speed stat, you can pretty much guarantee that 
most of the Aegis Slash are going to be um, under speeding you anyway so you'll be able to get that, that Ghost Yum Z attack off if you want to so that's just an example there I'll just quickly check if there's anything else I've covered with with Kalks um, um, Shadow Ball is a three hit kill with, without the Life Orb and without the Ghost Yum Z so three Shadow Balls will do it uh, guaranteed two hit kill on four HP Heatran with a with a sacred sword, so you get the picture, um, and especially with the speed boost as well. You, the only thing is you have to be careful with this set is if you've got the speed boost, you've got to remember that you'll be moving first more likely. So if you're not picking up a KO onto the opposing Pokemon, it's going to have a very good chance of KOing you back. So you just need to be aware of that um, going forward. Um, if you're using this set and like I say it was just a bit of a niche set it's just something to give you an idea it was a set that was popular in 2015 late to yeah 2015 uh, had a bit of usage um, and I think it's worth noting because it is an option on Aegis Slash that you should be aware of and maybe want to consider using yourself um, and the final set that I've just kind of put together well it's not the final set but it's you know we've got one more example set after this but the the, the the one of the final sets I've got is the focus slash set um it is shadow ball secret sword hidden part ice king shield four hp investment 252 special attack 252 speed with a timid nature which gives you two uh, 123 speed stat that is one point faster than an adamant max speed bishop so you can outspeed it and pick up a clean kill with sacred sword um, before it can attack, especially if it goes for a knockoff, and it's not jolly, of course. Um, but if it goes for the sucker punch, you've got the focus sash kind of protecting you. I don't feel like there's too much um, that we need to kind of cover here in regards to um, like attack damage and things like that. I mean, the hidden part ice is going to be picking up the kill or like defensive cards anyway, because we have the sash, so we're not really kind of banking on any defensive cards because we've got the sash kind of covering us here um, but we're going to be picking up the KO on something like Landorus Therian form with the Hidden Part Ice regardless and whatever comes out at us from <clears throat> the Landorus Therian form will be will be surviving because of the sash and like you can see here the, the Hidden Part Ice in return on the 4 HP Landorus Therian form is a clean one, one hit KO and you've got no worries like I say about being KO'd in the first place from an opposing lander so on that one-on-one -on -one, if it ever comes down to that you're going to be able to beat it one-on-one -on -one, which is quite nice um not much else to say about that it's just a very speedy Aegis slash it gives you a bit of security as well with the focus sash it's just another way to run it you know you can think about um just being able to <clears throat> take your opponent by surprise maybe um outspeed it get a quick attack off before they think you can um, and pick up a knockout before they can even get something um, moving you know it pairs nicely with other fast Pokemon so you can double into slots and remove that threat before it can get set up or start supporting its other members of the team so that's just an option there and then we will fly back over to our showdown because this is the last thing and it's just a, a notable mention but it's something that I do want to mention as well because I think um, again I like to put just a little um, set in here that maybe people haven't thought about too much but um, I have heard this mentioned and uh, I do think there is a lot of um, utility in this set and that's either with a psychic or a misty seed so um, we've got just a, a, a spread again quiet nature just as slow as possible 252 HP 4 defense uh, 92 special attack and then 156 special defense and this special defense is the magic number again I've left that fourth move slot open because you can go there with either wide guard you can go there with shadow sneak flash cannon hidden part ice whatever you want in that last slot um, but this is the big 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 reason that, the, that this is actually really good um, and it kind of works in the, the the role reversal to how um, <clears throat> the, the the very initial set that we did to outspeed opposing Aegis Slashes to get that uh, Gossium Z never ending nightmare onto them to pick up the KO first this kind of is a bit of a role reversal so you don't mind being outsped because with the, the, the seed boost you are going to be able to take pretty much it's got a 6.3% chance from an opposing 252 uh, plus natured uh, Aegis Slash in its blade form you're going to be able to 
pretty much take that and if you have a look at the response here your shadow ball is an easy kill back on the same Aegis slash so allows you to survive that it's the same for the hydragon as well if you look at hydragon and you look at its z move i mean that's z move there and that's modest i mean you're taking that quite comfortably with the the um, special attack boost so that's pretty good and sacred sword um in return it's not doing bad damage really like 63 to 75 percent so if you can get any amount of like bit of chip on it uh you could potentially take down a hydragon because you know you can take that that big z move that they could potentially be throwing out at you and that was just a notable mention for this set and it's something that i do like but as always guys with all of these sets and everything like that they will all be linked in a pair spin for you guys to use if there's any questions or anything about the the sample sets that i've done or some maybe move choices or anything like that do let me know i'm happy to answer any questions that you've got or any queries about why i might not have um suggested this or suggested that or put something together to handle this pokemon um it's still early days in the format so there's a lot that it can change between now and the format kind of getting well underway in january the first but these are just ideas like i say to give you an idea of what this pokemon's capable of and what potentially can do in battle and just give you some ideas to kind of starting points so i hope they are helpful but as always with our competitive guides we're going to have a look at some good partners for this pokemon so flick over to this pretty page full of Pokemon good partners and I've just kind of outlined some good partners that I think are quite good with Aegislash now uh, start at the top with Tapu Lele obviously the cycle train is going to be very good because Sucker Punch is an attack that causes you a little bit of an issue um, and also dark types now with the terrain you've got the the immunity to any priority attacks so Aegislash can you know maneuver without any fear of those and with Tapu Lele, it's such a good Pokemon um, to answer to things like Hydreigon, Tyranitar, um, those, those threatening dark type Pokemon that are going to cause Aegislash a lot of problems, like Bishop as well, because, you know, especially if you're running a subset Aegislash, you can sub and then just Moonblast the, the Bishop with your Lele, you're going to outspeed it more than likely. Um, and get rid of it that way so it just gives you Aegislash slash a bit of cover with the terrain and um, it's got good offensive coverage to deal with those big threats that it's kind of going up against potentially a fair knotted lander Therian form as well it's always going to be a good partner for Aegislash slash with the intimidate support it's also got that ground immunity so it's a good switch in for any ground type attacks coming out at it um, and it's got again good offensive uh, coverage it's able to hit um, the majority of, of things that threaten Aegislash Slash for, for very good damage. Like Hydreigon, it's got Superpower um, for Heatran, it's got uh, Earthquake for Charizard Y for Volcarona, it's got Rock Slide. So in regards to that, it gives Aegislash Slash a lot of cover and the Intimidate kind of just bolstering that up as well makes it a lot a lot better as well so a very good partner for Aegislash. slash um another one that i do want to mention is hydreigon because if you look at the two types of, of both Aegislash slash and hydreigon they have like nearly perfect defensive synergy between the two they're a great switch in for each other for all the attacks everything that Aegislash slash is weak to hydreigon resists everything that hydreigon's weak to Aegislash slash resists and vice versa so they're, they're a match made in heaven almost so very good pokemon um cover each other very well and um, a nice combination to think about um, if you want to use that combination another pokemon i will just mention is rotom heat again it's another one of those floaty pokemon it is going to be immune to those ground type attacks um, <clears throat> so it gives you that good synergy there and again it gives you that good offensive synergy because it's a it's a nice switch into fire type attacks as well it's going to be able to soak those up quite nicely and um a lot of those fire type attackers aren't going to be able to really hit rotten for very good damage but you've got this the the electric types there that probably be able to do decent damage especially at things like charizard y heatran as well you're going to be able to hit for very good damage it's also got will-o-wisp as well which is an option to kind of neuter some of the the more physical threats like tyranitar etc so um all in all a very good pokemon to pair with Aegis Slash and um, the nice thing with Aegis Slash is it has access to Wide Guard which can help further support your Rotom H in really difficult tight situations um, and then to kind of round off just the, 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 the Pokemon that I've said kind of I would have thought were good 
good partner in Pokemon. I've got to put Kangaskhan in there, Mega Kang. Um, it's got Fake Out support to allow you to help the Aegis Slash set up if it needs to. And again, it's got that good offensive coverage against those Dark type Pokemon with, with attacks like Law Kick even double edge and things like that it's going to be able to deal a lot of damage and and remove some of those big threats to to Aegis slash before they can do you know significant damage to it um some good partnering pokemon to use with y guard support i do like charizard y for starters charizard y gets access to tailwind um and Aegis slash if you speed it in a particular way you know if you've got that 92 speed investment neutral nature you're going to be able to get the jump on a lot of base 110 pokemon um and do some damage from that side of things the Y guard will protect you from things like rock slide muddy waters blizzards all those kind of spread attacks but it's mainly rock slide that you've got to be a little bit worried about and also for volcarona and i do love the volcarona partnership here because you can Y guard next to it and allow your volcarona to get a quiver dance off it's such a nice utility to do that and um again volcarona gives you a little bit of coverage against those dark type pokemon with its bug type attacks so you're going to be outspeeding most things after after one quiver dance and then you're probably likely going to be picking up chaos with the quiver dance on most dark type pokemon that you're going to be coming up against and uh, again it gives you a nice bit of coverage as well against opposing aegis slashes that we've been through so much in this little competitive guide that can cause your own aegis slash quite a few problems um now i do want to just outline some weather support as well because i think um Pelipper, Tyranitar and Politoed are very um, good notable mentions here because Charizard Y is going to be a big threatening Pokemon for your own Aegis Slash and um, being able to change the weather into your kind of favour, reducing the, the, the attack power of those fire type moves is going to make it a lot more comfortable and you're going to be able to survive those big big attacks especially if you've got the rain like then you don't need to worry about overheats or anything like that so um the sand is fine because you bring tyranitar in it supports uh Aegis slash against the majority of big fire type attackers with those rock type moves it's got coverage with its fighting type attacks for those opposing dark type pokemon and heatran as well um so it's a very good partner all in all and just a little notable mention now earlier on in the video when we were going through some um just ideas about um how threatening opposing opposing aegis slashes can be with that that never-ending nightmare i want to just give a mention to smeagol because smeagol is the only pokemon with normal typing and follow me in the format so if you sit next to your own aegis slash and you're threatened by an opposing aegis slash you can always follow me and pull that Gossium Z into you, and it's not going to do anything. Kind of wasting it, so that's 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 got. It's got to be worth noting at least. You know, I don't know how it would perform in match, but it's an idea to think about, and it's a good support option if you're, you're loose end for one. Smeagol as well, being Smeagol gets access to things like Wide Guard, Fake Out, Spore, a flurry of different options. So it's never a bad supporting Pokemon, and something worth mentioning. So. That kind of rounds up some of the good partners, just examples of those. And then we can have a look at how to counter Aegis Slash. So, start off with the moves, Dark Pulse Crunch, Knock Off Fire Play, all Dark type attacks are all going to be very good against Aegis Slash, especially Fire Play, I do like Fire Play a lot. And that Knock Off from the Bishop as well. Um, Shadow Ball, obviously a very good attack against it, going to be hitting it for super effective damage. Earthquake, Earth Power, Heat Wave, Overheat, Flamethrower. Um, and then the, the status kind of moves that I would say are probably quite good against it are Taunt, Spawn, Sleep Powder, because Taunt is such a good utility against Aegis Slash. If you can stop it King Shielding, if you can stop it putting up a sub, if you can stop it Wide Guarding, you're pretty much shutting it down and you're locking it into that stance mod, that, that weak mod, so you can pick up a clean, quick, easy kill rather than having to kind of pick your moment perfectly to, to hit it to take it out after it's attacked you or vice versa you know not going into that defense mode that turn you lock that possibility out of the equation again sleep or spore powder uh, spore or sleep powder are very good options as well sleep and Aegis slash is not doing anything so you can take advantage of those free turns while you can and make good use of them you can get rid of it quite quickly just to note some dark type pokemon i think mandibuzz is a very good pokemon against it because even if you hit into the king shield you take the attack drops and um, you're not really too worried because <clears throat> you're going off Aegis Slash's attack stat, not your own. So 
I think that's a very nice option. Obviously, we've talked about and mentioned Bishop right through this this competitive guide. It's a very threatening Pokemon. Because of that Defiant ability, it doesn't care if it hits into the King Shield because the Defiant ability just activates and nullifies any drops anyway. Tyranitar, always going to be very good. Assurance is another move that you could put on there that would be have a very good utility. You know, if you can just chip Aegislast, your Assurance is going to be able to pick up the KR even in against the defense mod. You have to be a little bit careful if you're using Tyranitar because of things like Sacred Sword and Flash Cannon that can hit you for good damage but aside from that it's going to be a very good pokemon to come in on those those shadow balls etc hydreigon is a very good pokemon it's got the um that dark pulse it can flinch it's going to be faster than Aegislash as well and you, you never know you might see the um black hole eclipse the z move come out which is going to have the potential to pick up the KO as well on, on Aegislash. And I'll just round things off with the last Dark type I'd like to mention. There are a flurry of more, but these are the ones that I like the the, the, the idea of facing down against the Aegislash. I think they've got a good, a good matchup against it, and that is a Lolan Persian. That parting shot is going to be huge to reduce the attack damage and things from the Aegislash. You've got Taunt as well, and you've got uh, Foul Play as well. So it's a very good Pokemon, very good utility, very good support in Pokemon, and does a number on Aegislash. So moving on, we've got obviously Lyra's Theory form we've already mentioned. It's a good partner, but it's a good Pokemon to use against Aegislash. If Aegislash isn't uh, EV'd correctly, then even minus one Tectonic Rage can pick up a KO against a defense form Aegislash. So that is something you need to be aware of. You need, if that's something that worries you, you can calc against it, but you need to be aware of it a little bit um, because that is a calc that can catch you off guard. Exactly the same with um, Excadrill, another Pokemon that's commonly carrying that um, Ground DMZ Tectonic Rage. I do like Mimikyu as well. Um, Mimikyu has that disguise ability, so I can take whatever attack from the Aegislash first. Disguise gets broken, you get a free attack into it that turn, and then the next turn you're probably going to be outspeeding it, and you're going to threaten it with a kill, uh, kind of forcing it again into that defense mode, um, and kind of pinning it in and making your opponent be the, the one that has to make a decision rather than you in that turn. Um, and then you've got your fire types. Uh, obviously, they're going to be very threatening. All get access to overheat. All have the option to um, pick up a one hit KO, even in the defense mode, even with all the defense stats in the world behind you. It's going to be cutting through that, that shield pretty easily. You've got Volcarona, Heatran, uh, Rotom Heat, and Charizard Y, probably top of the list there are all going to be very good against against the Aegislash, all going to be able to outspeed it as well, which is a big thing. Um, and then just a little notable mention down the bottom to Snorlax, because Snorlax is one of those Pokemon that is going to be immune to the Shadow Balls, to the Ghost type attacks. It's not going to take too much from uh, things like Flash Cannon. It will take decent damage from the Sacred Sword, but you've got to remember it's not a boosted by Stab, it's not got the same type attack bonus. As, um, as fighting types have, so it's not going to be doing too much damage. It's going to be doing a lot though. Um, but Snorlax being so bulky is going to be able to take it. And the thing is, Snorlax being slower than Aegislash means it's going to be, you know, it gets access to high horsepower. And if the Aegislash decides to attack into the Snorlax, you're going to be able to take that attack pretty much, whatever it is. I would even go so far to say as you probably can take a plus two Sacred Sword from an Aegislash, and you'll you'll be picking up the kill with a high horsepower in return in that defense, um, in that attack mode of Aegislash. So I do think it's a very good option against it um, because unless you're in a trick room and you, 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 know, you know you're faster than it, every other situation is it's going to have to, if it wants to attack, it's going to have to make itself vulnerable, which gives you the opportunity to kind of get in there and pick up a quick kill before it can do anything else. And maybe that's enough for you to take the game. But... I think that is it guys, um, as always everything will be linked in the description below, the pace bin, the link to the, the, the uh, damage calculator, the uh, pokemondb.net website where you can find all the information and things like that. Um, we've went over an hour, wow, so this has been a bit of a longer one, so thank you very much and uh, for, for sticking with us for this one. Um, I did put quite a bit of work into this and I enjoyed this one because Aegislash is one of my favourite Pokemon and um, I do expect it to be one of the more top tier Pokemon um, of this season I don't feel like it's gone away anytime soon 
got very good utility it's got very good support options it's got very good defense and offense so um it's nearly one of like in a nutshell it's nearly a perfect pokemon if you can get a perfect pokemon um but it's very good and it's it's um it's very easy to start using and it's very good when you master it as well i know a lot of um german players that used it in 2015 and they were just like monsters with it like there was like the german shield the famous german shield core that was just impossible to break down um so it's got a lot of potential um but it does have a lot of checks you know this 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 how to counter it there are a lot of stuff and i haven't even mentioned half the other things that can check in and really deal with it very well and these are just a handful of things that i just wanted to make you aware of and like i say this is just a quick overview of uh of Aegis slash so i hope you've enjoyed it guys if you have as always please leave a like it is massively appreciated if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you do we have a ton of vgc content um all the time and even more coming up around the corner we have a stream once a week uh, we have a daily upload with our school of hard knocks um, and we will be continuing to do these competitive guides right up until we've kind of covered the majority of the the format um, to a point where we're happy with anyway so i'm gonna leave it there not drag it on any longer just a big thank you to you for tuning in uh, if you've got any questions comments i would love to hear them let me know in the description below um comment section below not the description of course um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I am able to guys so have a great evening afternoon night whatever time of day it is take care of yourselves and until next time I'll see you later so until then bye bye